All right, welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna to continue on with Entity Framework. I've been really enjoying making these videos. Hopefully you've been benefiting from me making these videos. That's what it's all about, this channel, by the way. It's just when I learn things in code, I'm no expert by any means, I'm always learning. And when I find something new and I think it's pretty useful, or maybe, you know, I found it hard to pick up at first, I will make videos on it, hopefully helping you uh, with those same issues. So if you like that kind of stuff, hit subscribe. Today we're going to continue with Entity Framework Core with our ASP.NET Core web application. However, we're not really messing with the UI today. Today we're going to talk about how to add another new table to our existing uh, context. Our, our, well, in our case, we called it demo context. Pretty much our Entity Framework instance is what you can think of this as. If you haven't been following along the last, I don't know how many videos we're at now, maybe six or so, six or seven, uh, I recommend you starting from the beginning because we start all the way from creating our whole database using Entity Framework to you know, reading from it, writing to it, uh, updating, in the future we'll do deleting. Um, but I thought this would be a pretty good topic because maybe down the road sometime, you know, you're working along and you think of new functionality and you're like, oh crap, I have to add a new table to my database. So that's what we're basically going to talk about today. Uh, as I've been using in the past, we're using a SQLite database, though this should apply with any kind of database. The context wise should be the same, right? We have an on configuring uh, method here that we're overriding. We have a connection string. Your connection string will probably look different. It'll probably be password protected or whatever, but for my case, it isn't. It's just a path to where our SQLite database is or my SQLite database is. Um, and then we have a DB set of users, which refers to, let me close these migrations real quick on the right, which refers to this user model that we created. We did some validation and stuff. Let's say I want to, maybe my website's holding music, people's favorite music. They go on this website and they catalog, you know, their favorite music. So let's create a new model. And let's just call this uh, music model, I guess. It's gonna be pretty basic. It's probably gonna have like a few properties. Um, one is ID, which, you know, seems to be in every, uh, model and then we'll have another property. It'll be string and let's say it's song name and then we can have artist and that will the extent of my uh, my music model, but Hopefully you guys um, Get the point like I thought of new functionality for my website. I'm thinking oh, maybe people want to store their music on here well, I got to add a new model and well crap how do I use Entity Framework when, if we open our tables, we only have the user table. We don't have this new music, or user table, did I say music? I don't remember. We don't have this music table uh, yet. How do we get it in there? Well, that's where we make a new migration and then we update our database with that new migration. After updating, of course, the first thing, our demo context that we created. So if we look at our migrations, I've already made three. I don't remember why I, I, oh yeah, it was from the validation. When we added validation, I added new migration. So that's basically, you know, the gist of what we're going to do um, in our context. We're just going to add a, another DB set to our demo context. And then we're going to create a new migration. We'll check it out together and just make sure things look good before we actually update our database. But just below the users, I'm just gonna add another DB set. And of type is going to be the new music model that we created. And I can just name it uh, music. And we'll have setters and getters just like with the user. And that's all we have to do as far as in our demo context now what I want to do is I want to go to Tools, uh, NuGet Package Manager, and open the Package Manager console. Of course, you have to be in Visual Studio in order to see this, but here we have the console down here. And I want to add migration, which is the command. It's add dash migration. Hopefully you can, let me zoom in. And here's all the migration names that we use so far. So let me call this fourth, just to keep with the convention that I've been using, call fourth migration. 
and it'll build it and then once it builds it it'll show up over here and we can check it out and see if it added it so let's look at it let's zoom out a little bit because i'm too far and here we go in our new migration you can think of a migration as a link between the last migration and this one migrations are merely just a snapshot of what's changed over time and in our latest one you can see that we are creating a table named music and it goes ahead and it lists the different columns aka the properties that we created in our in our music model and then just because id is one of the special uh, names in any framework it knows that this is the primary key okay so that looks good let me just make sure and i couldn't find so if you're using sqlite you're going to want to use some kind of way to display your data and that's where i'm using this dv browser for sqlite and i still haven't found a way to refresh my my database the only thing i found is i have to reopen it um, in order to see the change so i might have to do that i'll play around with it a little bit but let's go ahead now that that migration's made, let's go ahead and update database. Build started, build succeeded, and it should be done. However, like I said, there's no real good way to refresh this. I can't right click on tables. If I browse data, I can refresh, but I don't think that'll do anything here and it doesn't. So let's uh, just close this and then reopen it, I guess. So here it is, demo DB, let me open it. You can see now, we can see this new music table. And let's go ahead and just expand it and see the different columns. We have ID, song name, and artist. That might look familiar, hopefully it does. <laughs> uh, it's, it comes from our music model. That's how simple it is, guys. When you're creating new things and you're like, oh, I gotta add new models, uh, then I gotta add it to the database. It's no big chore anymore. It's super simple. That's the power of Entity Framework. It's, uh, at first I found Entity Framework a little bit scary, I guess, for lack of a better word. Intimidating maybe is a better word. And now I'm just like, wow, this is so useful and uh, it, it makes things so much simpler and it's great. So that's, uh, that's what we got in this video. I think in the next video, what I'd like to do is, let's say we have the opposite. Let's say we have a table in our SQLite database Let's say I created a new table and I called it uh, playlists. So maybe users will have playlists of different songs, of different music, I guess. Maybe I should have called it songs too late now. <laughs> no big deal. But let's say I, want, I had a playlist table in here, but I don't, have, I don't have it in our actual code yet. How do I import that? I think that will be my next video, hopefully. Uh, so stay tuned if that interests you and subscribe if you like this stuff. And um, I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care.